Okay, uh, welcome everybody to this uh, presentation on product social considerations within design and development. Uh, uh, we're going to be presenting you, you, uh, from UCA today and my colleague Lillian will be driving the presentation and myself, Martin Charter, will be in the, the background, you know, adding, adding if, you know, some, a few comments uh, as, as we go through. So this particular piece of work emerges from all these findings and insights emerge from 21 interviews we've done with industry. And this is within the orienting project that is uh, Horizon 2020 funded project. Uh, that is developing an operational methodology, uh, you know, covering uh, life cycle sustainability assessment. And uh, next slide, please, Lillian. And just a bit of background on ourselves. Uh, we're one of the uh, partners in the, the orienting project. Uh, we have a background as our centre back to the mid 90s around uh, sustainability in design and development and innovation, uh, quite significantly involved in uh, standardisation. Uh, and our role has been is particularly in this project looking at product circularity, uh, where we've undertaken a lot of uh, a number of projects. Um, including work looking at the sort of what's going on in the G20, G20 within in relation to circular economy, uh, you know, product policy issues and circular economy with for the uh, work we did for the commission and a book around designing for a circular economy. And we're involved in sort of multiple projects in this area. So I think without further ado, maybe I'll pass across to Lillian, if that's OK. Thank you, Martin. Yes, so uh, just a brief reminder on orienting uh, for those of you that are not, not familiar with um, the project. Uh, as Martin uh, mentioned, it's a European Commission Horizon 2020 funded project that aims to develop an operational life cycle sustainability assessment methodology uh, that integrates the environmental, social and economic uh, impacts as well as uh, material criticality and product circularity. Uh, so the findings that we're presenting today are based on 21 in-depth interviews. Uh, the main objectives uh, for these interviews were to gain insight into the product-related circularity and product-related um, social issues within industry that will inform the development of Orienting's LCSA methodology. Also to better understand the practical considerations being faced by industry when attempting to assess um, either circularity or uh, social considerations at a product level. Therefore, uh, the interviews have focused uh, primarily on uh, design and development. So why design and development? Uh, within the environmental domain, uh, as most of you will be aware, that 80% um, of the environmental impacts from a product are determined uh, during the design stage. So this in turn raises the question as to what social impacts of a product are or can be determined uh, at the design stage. Now, as a brief uh, note here, uh, it's relevant to point out that because the interviews focused uh, within the design and development process, the insights are based on those involved directly with the design process. And therefore, while the interviewees were able to identify um, social issues at a product level, responsibility was felt to be held el elsewhere within the organization, such as supply chain, uh, CSR and procurement. Uh, in order to gain insight into the different uh, design stages and decision-making process, we employed a tiered strategy that involved in for the larger companies to initially interview corporate sustainability directors, as this would provide an overview of, um, of these considerations across uh, various business functions, and then to aim uh, for follow-up uh, interviews with those specifically responsible for either product circularity or product social issues. For the startups and SMEs, uh, the aim was to interview a founder or the managing director as responsibility for these issues are likely to be carried out by these functions. 
Uh, in terms of the sample data, the interviews held the following positions and regarding awareness of LCAs and at a design and development level, this ranged from basic to medium uh, to expert. Company sizes ranged from startups to SMEs and multinationals uh, across primarily Europe and the US, although there was one company headquartered in India. Uh, products ranged from uh, final to intermediate and hybrid uh, within the following uh, industries. Now, in terms of um, product social uh, findings, um, so we have become aware that designing products and systems from a social well-being perspective is an emerging topic uh, within the literature. However, there seems to be a gap in knowledge um, regarding which um, social which designing for social impact uh, is found uh, in industry. So based on a non-exhaustive uh, literature review, we found that the following authors indicated that while uh, social impact assessments and social life cycle assessments are two of the most common uh, processes uh, discussed within the literature to evaluate uh, the social impact of products, uh, not a single company that they interviewed used either of these processes. Uh, now, less discussed in the literature are methods for uh, predicting social impact within the early design stages, and there are very few tools that assist in uh, predicting impacts before production. Uh, within the same uh, project, the, also, the authors also identified that the main social topic discussed at a design and development level appear to be uh, health and safety. Now, um, these uh, findings also, are, they're also aligned with the findings that we found from the 21 interviews uh, conducted with industry. Martin, do you have any comments? Uh, no, only to reinforce that in, in some senses, uh, it, it's surprising, you know, that products in the way we're defining it, product social issues are uh, a, a new issue for industry maybe. It seems to be more of a discussion in academia. Uh, there may be issues to do with language in that health and safety, you know, is, is, is perhaps a, a consideration or is a key consideration in design and development and products, but may not be thought of as a social issue as such. Thank you. So uh, based, on, based on this, uh, what we're defining as product social is the potential social impacts that a product may have at any stage of its life cycle, which is defined during the design and development stage. Examples of these can be uh, during production, for example, accessible and inclusive designs that meet or exceed standards of accessibility and inclusivity. Uh, from a supply chain perspective, um, conditions around minimum or living wage, fair employment practices, uh, treatments of workers. Within the use uh, phase, uh, product social considerations could be around improved health, uh, well-being, happiness, um, or benefits to uh, communities. From the 21 uh, companies interviewed, all claimed to consider product social issues, and these were primarily from a supply chain perspective. Uh, based on further feedback from the companies uh, interviewed, uh, uh, it was acknowledged that product social um, considerations are not uh, a design requirement and not expected by the user, therefore they're, they're not a priority within uh, design and development. In terms of measuring uh, social impact, uh, social LCAs are not well understood by industry as um, it was raised, uh, well, the differences between social LCAs and audits uh, were raised by uh, three of the companies interviewed and also um, two further uh, advanced companies indicated that industry was not ready for um, social LCA. Further challenges uh, regarding uh, the use of social LCA for measuring uh, product social impacts are um, the challenges around reducing social impact to a single number and also um, the inherent weighting uh, of the different factors within uh, the social space. Um, whilst uh, the social impact has been seen uh, to be applied within supply chains, um, it was also mentioned that 
the impacts across manufacturing use and end of life of the product. Um, there, there is a lack of awareness uh, in this respect. Um, when asked about further uh, measurements or, or indicators used for uh, the product social topic, um, five, five of the uh, it participants raised um, certified materials, uh, further, further interviewees also raised um, having a B Corp certification or the use of the HIG transparency index. So the key uh, product social topics that were raised um, during the interview um, were community well-being, which at a product level is how a product can enable um, empowerment and making sustainable choices. So for example, uh, this image uh, represents uh, a dishwasher where the company uh, intervened at the early phases of uh, the design process to implement something that would encourage users to choose the most environmentally friendly um, cycle program, for example. Uh, within health and safety, some companies are considering um, health and safety as a product social topic at a design and development level, while others, it appears to be a technical um, consideration such as child safety, um, with the use of screws instead of um, snap fits when, um, when, when a toy uh, requires uh, like small batteries. Um, there's also human health around uh, material toxicity um, during material selection and design for inclusivity. So, for example, um, considering how accessible products are to visual, motor, audio impairments at early design stages and um, issues around affordability. So within the design process, uh, the consideration of materials, production process, reduction of costs that will enable accessibility to uh, the wider sector. Um, Martin, do you have any comments? Thanks, um, Mike. Perhaps could you just flick back to the previous slide? I just wanted to sort of uh, emphasize what we are finding is, I mean, a key slide there is social LCA is not considered well understood by 19 of the 21 companies. So I just, uh, just reinforcing what Lillian said, it, it particularly about bearing in mind this is within design and development. It's, it's a very new area uh, for those in design and development, um, and and they almost, um, you know, again, re what reinforcing what Lillian is saying, it's they have ideas what are, what what social issues are, but essentially it's somebody else's responsibility to deal with. Uh, but I but I think if moving back to your new slide, Lillian, mm -hmm. as you're illustrating there, there are a whole host of what could be defined as product social issues, but they, for some reason it's just not being picked up in design and development. So I think it's quite a, 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 an area where there needs to be better understanding. So. Um, Based on these findings, the key learnings uh, for us was that social impact uh, does not appear to be a design requirement within industry. Uh, social impact at the product level is currently not measured within industry, as well as um, reinforcing uh, that social LCA is not well understood. Uh, there is also an a need for an increased clarity over the types of product social uh, decisions that are being made by the different stakeholders involved in the design and development process. And uh, there are a few existing tools that support the inclusion of uh, design considerations um, during uh, the, the design and development process, early stages. So uh, next steps um, for this uh, research is uh, we're currently undertaking um, further interviews with uh, WBCSD members, uh, which will be completed uh, in June. Uh, to, further, to further research the product social considerations within design and development. Uh, we will also be writing a report based on the findings of these um, first 21 interviews and the 10 interviews with the WBCSD uh, members. Now, uh, we've um, prepared a couple of questions um, to uh, prompt discussion amongst uh, participants, as we are aware that this is an emerging topic and there are 
uh, both gaps in the literature and uh, within industry. Um, so, um, well, I'll, I'll open up for um, the session for uh, discussion or questions from the audience and I'll pass it on to you, Martin. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Lillian. So do we have any questions, observations, thoughts? Have we missed something out? Is there research we're missing? Or what, what are people's experiences in the, uh, in the, uh, in, in, in the, you know, amongst the attendees? I think, uh, uh, Julian, you have some experience working maybe in the cooperative sector, as I understand it. Do you, would you like to make a comment? Maybe not. <laughs> oh, sorry, my microphone doesn't work. Okay, no problem. If you wanted to put something into the chat, any thoughts or observations for the discussion, that 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 would be great. And uh, um, we have any other uh, uh, comments? Is uh, is uh, Varamik from Temasol? Uh, are you from a company or from a consultancy? Did you want to make any comments? Or hello, hello, yeah. yes, <laughs> great. I'm not from a, a corporate company. I'm I'm into research. Okay. Um, so I work in the harmless project, mm -hmm. and we are uh, designing a framework for safe and sustainability by design. So that's why I'm interested in this webinar. Mm. But we we don't put a strong focus on social issues, actually. So I'm not really able to answer your, your questions here. Have, have you seen the social dimension emerging at all within your within the, the work you're doing? Not really. In this project, mm. we are focusing on environmental issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have this uh, occupational and consumer safety uh, dimension that could be seen as a social issue, but that's it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just here to broadening my, my view on, on these issues, on these social issues. Uh, so I think that's, you know, your last point is an interesting point because, you know, um, as we've said here, health and safety seems to be almost seen as a sort of technical issue um, and not being seen as or framed as a social issue. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, and, and of course, most of what's happened in terms of design and development, if we look at eco-design, design for environment, you know, environmentally conscious design, whatever term is used in the, in the world, that, that's primarily focused on environmental and uh, financial considerations. So the social dimension, generally speaking, even for those who talk about sustainable product design, it is, really means eco-design. So that social dimension has sort of has not really been integrated into the discussions in practice, generally speaking, for mainstream companies. So, um, again, do we have any experience or further thoughts from people where they have, perhaps where they have seen social considerations being more clearly integrated? So given my strategy uh, of asking people, uh, uh, Veronique, a question, I will ask somebody else a question to see if you're, this is a good way to forward. Hopefully you won't run away. Uh, maybe Carla, did you have any comments? Hi, thanks. <laughs> no, yeah. actually, I'm part of the orienting uh, project, uh, which is also very interesting to know about this social dimension, but I personally have no experience with it yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that seems 
to be true for most of <laughs> most for most of the moment. Uh, so again, Julian, you said your mic was uh, you had problems with your mic. Did you? Uh, so this is from Julian. Uh, personally, I feel that social issues are increasingly taken account of by companies, but um, it's the uh, by companies mainly thanks to discussions around new regulations. But I agree, the focus is mostly on on environmental issues. Um, so, see, so they are taking account of in companies, but maybe not in design and development. Certainly that's our finding. Um, but there's still social, I mean, if we go back to sort of classical marketing, you know, stuff, and if a company is like a Procter & Gamble is, is doing market research, they're, they're absolutely considering a, a whole range of social issues, you know, in, in the brief that feeds into uh, design and development. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of the issues that, that Lillian uh, was, was highlighting there, but again, maybe they're just not thought of as social issues by, by companies in, or those involved in design and development. So, uh, so it's Veronique, I, I'm also wondering, do you know why a, a SLCA is not considered understood uh, by industry? What could be done to change this? I don't know, Lillian, if you picked up on anything or any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, so uh, the main reason that was given by uh, participants was that industry is not ready um, and also the, the lack of available data around uh, the use phase, for example. Um, again, traceability within the supply chain was also uh, factored into, um, like, in terms of using um, social LCA. Um, the qualitative um, nature around uh, social LCA was also a consideration as to um, why it's not used. Um, some of the companies uh, were quite clear that they, um, uh, as opposed to the environmental um, assessments, like primary and second, well, the use of uh, qualitative um, data was a priority for these companies. Um, so yeah, th those are some of the reasons uh, given by the by participants. And it, it may be for a number of companies uh, that um, that they're sort of cognizant to the fact that the standards work in ISO is just starting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's maybe others uh, like Ale, if she, I think Ale's on the call, she may, or, or Mauro, uh, they may be more up to date with me. Maybe the ISO standards work on on, on social LCAs, maybe only six, 12 months into development. So it may be still at a very early stage. So, you know, maybe uh, some of the companies that are thinking about this are really, you know, still working on standards, on terms and, you know, terminology and definitions. Um, so there may be, you know, in terms of maturity of topics, it is still maybe, you know, you know, not be so so high up. But of course, what I when we started to um, address this issue and think about it and ask the questions, of course, you can't launch a product onto the market unless, you know, if you've got chemicals in it, you know, over and above what's required. If the product's going to catch a light. So those are all um, safe health and safety issues, which are impacting on human and, and social dimensions. So it, it, it feels to me as if people in design and development are putting in a sort of a different box. <laughs> they're, they're used to thinking about technical, you know, not using brominated flame retardants or using brominated flame retardants or whatever the, the terminology is, you know, to inhibit products keeping catching light, which may be thought as a technical issue. Um, and toxicity might be thought of as a chemicals issue. So it, it's maybe the language and terminology, you know, companies are dealing with some of these issues, but they're not 
in design and development, but they're not thinking of them as social issues, maybe. Do we have any comments, thoughts on that observation? Oh, Beatrice, see a hand up. Great. This is exactly what we want to see. So Beatrice, go ahead. Hello, I'm a colleague of Veronique, and uh, we are involved also in another project, European Project Sunshine, and based on our experience, the industrial partner with whom we work or try to collaborate to uh, develop uh, the safe and sustainable by design. So in that experience, when we start to talk about the social, for them, it's, it's quite hard to address the indicator required by uh, the uh, social uh, um, by, by the mythology, sorry, because uh, the question for them are not uh, uh, related to the products. It's more, of course, on the organization level. And then they, they, they are scared a little bit to, to reply or to get uh, to, to share the data and they don't see the link. So uh, I was wondering, perhaps, I don't know, I'm not an expert in social uh, at all. That's why I'm here. But I was wondering if uh, a simplified version or just indicator more focus only on your product can uh, help uh, to promote also the social evaluation among uh, companies, especially a uh, small medium enterprise. So I don't know uh, if you have thought about it or have you make some question about this aspect. I mean, I, we haven't addressed it in that level of detail, but a, but a, a, a quick uh, thought and observation, and, and Lillian may well have some other thoughts, is, is that what we've also seen within circularity, when we're looking at circular, you know, circularity, is that measuring and indicators are more mature at an organizational and a business unit level. So what we've found at a product level, it's similarly much more, um, it's much more immature. So a lot of companies are sort of in product circularity, they're considering, you know, they're building their teams around this, they're building their knowledge, they're considering what product circularity strategies they, they might implement, but they haven't necessarily implemented them yet. So what we found as well was that the, uh, at the level of the measurement, measurement is still at quite a rudimentary level, generally speaking, which is sort of measuring recycled materials or bio-based materials. So there is an analogy to say that um, maybe it, it is similar uh, on the social level, that there may be some measurement, you know, higher up, level up, uh, you know, at an organizational level, but this just hasn't, you know, percolated down to the product level yet. Um, maybe because of some of the language issues, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe there's not enough pressure for some of this, but you'd have thought for health and safety, there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> but again, I mean, for me, the in an interesting thought might be what uh, metrics for health and safety uh, are used at the design and development level to do uh, design engineers, particularly for more um, energy using products, do they have metrics to measure the relative health and safety of their products? But I guess this is part of the challenge and that your product is safe or not. <laughs> I guess you can't have it, it's a little bit safe. Um, so I think there's your know, further further work perhaps needs to be done there. I don't know, Lillian, did you have any other thoughts? Um, no, I mean, based on the findings and the fact that no one is actually measuring um, product social considerations um, at a product level, but um, even at an organizational level, um, I think that there is a, a lot of um, research to be done in terms of um, what is considered as a pro product social uh, impact. And also um, based on further feedback from the companies, the fact that it's not a, that product social or social impact is not a requirement within the design phase. Therefore, um, designers are not required to prioritize any social considerations beyond um, health and safety at a, at a 
during the design process. Uh, I think just building on that, I mean, it, again, it, it may be the sequence of the issues in the organization. So for example, uh, one might um, choose suppliers uh, that adhere to SA 8000 or some labor standard. Um, and and uh, so the, the considerations may be in relation to uh, the suppliers um, and, and at, that, th at lev that level, the practices that, that suppliers use. Uh, but again, for me, there's still issues that, that design and developers will uh, consider within with a, um, at the design and development level. So from Carla, was any of the interviewed companies from the textiles industry or perhaps from electronics, which use critical conflict raw materials, for example, in cell phones, those two examples I can think of have social issues in their, their, their product. But again, and sorry, Lily, and I'll just have a go at this first, is, is again, it, 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 it's who specifies. You probably, uh, within your procurement and supply chain, you, you know, they'll probably be charged with ensuring, for example, there's no child labor in, in Congo in the mining of, of critical raw materials, or perhaps they should be. Um, yeah, for, 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 for those that use uh, critical materials. So, so again, it's where in the organization, what are the issues and where in the organization are they dealt with? That's not essentially it's a design, that's not a design decision, that's a supply decision. So, um, so I think that that's, that's, which goes back down to the fact that a lot of the, those involved in the design and development said, yes, there are a whole series of social issues, but they're dealt with by other parts of the organization, not by us. Any other comments, Lillian? Um, yeah, just, just adding on to that. Um, so for example, designers are handed uh, like a, a handbook or a manual of you know, the, the materials that can or can't be used within a specific product. Um, but these decisions are uh, made at a supply chain um, level. So um, again, it's not really a design decision that, um, that designers are uh, taking uh, within their process. I think another, another observation from the interviews is although those involved in di design and development um, are saying that industry is not ready, the vast majority they're saying, um, what we found a little bit is there's not necessarily always entirely joined up thinking in the companies. We, we know, for example, of of some companies where something may be happening, uh, but the other parts of the organization may not know about it. So this came out of our product circularity work was this sort of um, the challenge sometimes with these issues to, to have clear and universal communication across the organization. So I think there's a strong likelihood that things are still very early. Um, but um, it much often depends on the uh, the function and the silo that people are operating in, unless there's a very well organized sort of team structure that's working, uh, you know, cr um, cross functionally. So, um, but I think based on what the variety of things. I would still feel that this is still quite early for, for the vast majority of organizations. Is this, what's your view, Lillian? Um, yeah, I mean, again, um, it, it goes back to uh, the, product, um, the product circularity considerations. Um, so we primarily spoke to uh, people involved within design and development. Um, 
I guess that the findings could have potentially been different had we spoken to uh, supply uh, supply man um, yeah supply chain uh, management or uh, procurement for example CSI. Um, but yeah, most of the product social uh, or what is what was understood during the interviews as product social considerations um, were from a supply chain perspective with a handful of um, design for inclusivity, which is primarily um, a decision that is made during the design and development process to include um, motor impairments, for example, uh, whilst maintaining uh, health and safety requirements. Um, so yeah, a, a clear example was given that, um, for example, people with arthritis are unable to open uh, quite easily a, a screw cap for medicine. Um, so they enable, um, they en enable uh, inclusivity uh, for this sector of the population while also um, complying with health and safety requirements so that children are unable to access um, the medicine uh, within these uh, containers. Um, so yeah, that, that was a clear example of product social at uh, design level. But, but actually, I'm just thinking about it um, from, let's say, our... Uh, one of our interviews, um, particularly with one plastics product company that supply products to the target's children, one of the challenges that um, that was observed, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Lillian, no. or build, build on it, was if they were producing um, uh, construction products for kids uh, using recycled materials, uh, one of the considerations there was um, any contamination of the recycled um, recycled plastics that they might use in producing those sort of uh, construction um, bricks, um, because kids can put that, of course, put that in their mat in their mouth. So there was there was in that instance, perhaps a social environmental link um, that um, they could technically produce the recycled materials, or produce the product from recycled materials, but they may not necessarily go ahead with that until they're really, really clear that the product's safe. So do you have any, did, any, did I get that roughly right, Lillian? Uh, yes, that's correct. And actually, um, I think the use of recycled materials for toys is banned in um, several countries. So um, at the moment they're trialing uh, these, specific, these specific products, but are unable to um, sell the, the products within these uh, countries uh, for, for those, that reason. Um, so, so, that, so that's quite interesting. It's that, that actual social dimension, health and safety issue is actually, you know, a, a market entry Mm -hmm. Your issue, you can't, unless you're dealing with that, well, you can't access certain markets. So, so do we have any um, final thoughts or observations or Ale or Maro, do you want to, do you want to make any comments from, from the project point of view or, or anything that we're picking up on the social LCA stuff uh, more generally? Sorry to uh, put to place you in it, <laughs> uh, but um, I, th I think that means that probably there is no further direct comments from the project at this stage. Um, so I think, um, yeah, unless we have any uh, final thoughts or comments, I know I see An Antonio is here and, you know, great to hear if you have any comments and uh, sorry, I miss your uh, first name, but Pasquale, Pasquilla, Pasquilla. <laughs> so Antonio, did you have any comments or observations? Uh, sounds like not. Um, so I think you know, unless anybody has any further comments or, uh, uh, you know, um, thoughts, we probably can sort of draw it to an end. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. It's clearly 
a new issue. Um, not much written on it in the literature. Uh, you know, whilst my gut feel is, you know, there are a lot of so product social issues that are actually being, you know, are in reality dealt with on the social uh, in the design and develop. It's clearly not not necessarily being thought of as social issues. So that's quite an interesting issue about language and interpretation. Um, and, and obviously the fact that the design and developers guys were able to come up with all sorts of social issues, but then say, okay, well, it's supply chain, it's CSR, it's not us. So there's, I think, some sort of gaps in knowledge that, uh, you know, are interesting to address in our various projects, maybe. And, and if anybody has any further observations or thoughts after the session, you know, I think please feel free to, to email uh, Lillian on that. And um, unless, again, anybody wants to make any final comments, we'll say thank you very much for your attention. We will be circulating the, uh, the video to, uh, to all of the attendees or the recording of the, of the recording to attendees and others who, who are unable to attend. Um, and uh, there, there's, there's going to be other webinars and uh, activity overall that will be publicized through the project. And uh, we may well be back at a later date on something on product circularity and product social issues. So thank you all for your attention. Thank you, everyone. And have a good rest of the afternoon and week. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.